This is a branded podcast from Latitude Studios. In the early 2000s, Steve Cotton ran a company serving the fast-growing data center industry with backup battery systems. Uh, most battery energy storage systems, particularly for general data centers, like think of where Netflix is hosted and anything you do in the web, we're all lead acid based. And uh, you would uh, provide these big kilotons of lead acid battery systems for these sites. And when those systems reach the end of their lives, the company monetized kilotons of lead acid batteries by sending them to recycling facilities, these industrial plants that break down and burn the components. You know, having the desire to understand, well, what happens to these batteries, I went to smelters, and they're a hellscape. It's very dangerous. You've got lead dust all over the floor. Um, you've got a bunch of people wearing hot suits, uh, literally chucking batteries into high-temperature furnaces. And it is not a healthy environment. It's not a safe environment. And there's got to be a better way. Two decades later, the technology has shifted, and lithium-ion batteries are now the dominant form of storage. But recycling hasn't changed a lot. Today, there are two types of dominant battery recycling methods. One is using high heat, similar to the process that Steve witnessed at the lead acid facilities. And so that's also known as uh, pyro, uh, and that really is high temperature, fossil fuels based, um, and it doesn't recover all the materials. For example, in lithium recycling, um, you burn the lithium or you lose what lithium you don't burn into what's called slag, which is a solid waste stream that you can't recover it. And so uh, pyro and smelting processes have challenges. The other is giving batteries a chemical bath in a process known as hydrometallurgy. And um, it's not really great when it comes to the environment um, or worker safety. You've got train loads of chemicals coming in. So the economics of uh, managing that, storing those in massive tank farms, and then spending tens of millions of dollars to run a trash dryer effectively to create what's called a sodium sulfate waste stream is a real challenge. Steve saw how big the battery recycling waste problem could become. And in 2015, after his data center power supply company was acquired, he invested in a company called Aquametals. And he became so convinced by Aquametals' novel approach to recycling, he became the CEO. Uh, what we're doing is we're using electricity to drive the process. And the electricity itself comes from renewable resources. And that can drive us with a clean energy technology uh, to produce this metal supply chain with a true opportunity to have a net zero environmental impact. The battery recycling industry is experiencing rapid growth as companies and countries look to build secure circular supply chains for critical minerals. In this episode, produced in partnership with Aqua Metals, Steve Cotton sits down with Stephen Lacey to talk about the growing battery waste problem and the urgency to invest in recycling techniques that don't lock in new sources of waste. When you produce many multiples more waste and pollution than the valuable materials that are recovered, is it really even recycling is the way we look at it. Let's talk about the scope of the problem. We have around 100 million electric vehicle batteries that could get retired in the next decade. There's so much volume coming, so much expected volume of material that's going to need to be recycled over the next decade as lithium-ion batteries overtake transportation and the grid. How do you wrap your arms around the scope of that challenge? Yeah, so that's a good rough estimate for um, uh, what is in the horizon is the past 15 years plus the current growing waves of EVs that are being sold today ultimately make their way to retirement. But what a lot of people don't think about is in addition, there's another major source of lithium ion batteries that need to be recycled now. Um, in addition to all the consumer electronics, you know, what do we do with all of our iPhone batteries and laptop and, and you know, everywhere you turn, there's a lithium battery on a GoPro, you name it. But the real huge quantities that are coming today are from these gigafactories um, and the gigafactory battery plants themselves, and that's in the form of production scrap. And so as battery components and these cathode, what are called cathode materials, are cut and formed, a significant amount of that scrap is produced, and sometimes that's as high as 10 to 15% of the entire production of the plant, especially in their earlier days as they're dialing in their processes. Um, so in the near term, this is a huge primary source of recycling recyclable materials 
for companies like Aqua Metals. Um, and you know, from now until the end of the decade, uh, we think there's an estimated 10 million tons or so of combined scrap material and end-of-life batteries that are really going to be ready to be recycled. And another data point that's interesting is the U.S. alone um, is going to be increasing uh, our gigafactory output by 200x just this decade. Um, And that's what started as Tesla's Gigafactory 1 that's right here by Aqua Metals in Tahoe, Reno, Nevada, uh, and with its original um, Gigafactory. And the U.S. is really rapidly standing up Gigafactories all over the country um, to reach that 200x uh, production levels, which is just a staggering stand-up of an entire battery production industry right here in the U.S. Um, And also the global market for lithium-ion batteries is really accelerating at a meteoric pace um, with demand for these new electric vehicles really leading the way. 2023 marked, for example, the first time ever that in the U.S. over 1 million EVs were sold. And um, there's already uh, over 100 models to be offered in the coming year. So there's a lot of uh, momentum uh, in that space. And it's driving a lot of the battery gigafactory builds and, of course, the production scrap and then ultimately the end-of-life cells. And so along with that, the availability of -of end-of-life batteries in manufacturing scrap materials is quickly rising. And if you look at the global lithium battery recycling market, it's already today roughly a $5 billion industry. And we expect it to grow by about five-fold just in the coming few years to the end of the decade to nearly $25 billion. And when you think about the material inside the battery, um, what are the most valuable materials and, and, and where are those materials going after they've been extracted um, and reused? So the materials that come out of lithium-ion batteries um, are actually quite valuable. And uh, the primary list of that is the lithium uh, and the nickel and the cobalt. Uh, and there's also some copper and some manganese um, that can be recaptured from uh, our recycling process. Uh, but if you look at the three highest value uh, minerals, which is the lithium and the nickel and the cobalt, that's really what we're after when we're recovering um, uh, from the economic aspect um, of the lithium batteries. I'd say that the, the smaller amounts of copper and manganese um, is uh, reuse oriented. So it's a multi-mineral recovery. So it's very very complex to be able to get those minerals and recapture them and get them in spec to go back into new batteries with battery manufacturers. Now, as people look to the future of battery recycling, they often look at the lead-acid battery recycling industry, where the vast majority of materials in batteries are reused. I think 95% of materials inside lead-acid batteries are are reused. Um, but there's there's definitely a darker side to that recycling story. What is that? Yeah, so um, the the positive side of that is that the lead recycling industry has done an incredible job of building the infrastructure to recycle nearly 100% of spent batteries. Um, so if you go and put in a new car battery, like a new lead-acid battery or a new battery in a data center, that, um, as an example I was referring to earlier, um, the amount of metal in that battery that came from a recycled source is about 80 to 90%. So those new batteries are mostly um, old batteries reborn as new batteries. And if you contrast that today to a new lithium battery that you get, um, regardless of the application, whether it's an EV or a piece of consumer electronics, et cetera, um, that has under 1% of the recycled lithium, nickel, or cobalt in that new battery. It all comes from mining sources today. Um, And that's going to change over time. And as the lithium industry grows and stabilizes, Stabilizes um, in, in the the hyper uh, growth curve um, stabilizes. We make this transition. More and more um, recycling infrastructure gets built. We get closer and closer um, and migrate from that less than one percent to eighty to ninety percent, just like uh, what lead has shown us. Um, and it's um, really only a couple decades of recycling, so it'll happen fairly quickly. 
But really, the environmental and worker safety impacts of lead recycling has been a challenge through smelting and has really put in incredible stress in communities. And that's um, in the form of massive pollution um, uh, that goes into the world in the form of things like a greenhouse gas and CO2, but also the particulate matter material and lead dust that can spread throughout a community. Um, workers um, get lead in their blood um, and have uh, injuries and deaths. And we want to make sure that this type of infrastructure is what doesn't get built as we go from this 1% to the 90% of lithium batteries coming from recycled infrastructure uh, in the coming years. And uh, I I think that we have a unique opportunity as an industry and really as a world um, to build this massive uh, lithium battery recycling infrastructure right the first time. So we're not talking about going back and upgrading uh, smelters or uh, standard hydro chemically intensive processes with all the risks um, to workers and waste streams. Um, and if you do that right the first time, you've got the answer uh, that we can be really proud of in the future and uh, really make this transition a clean transition. So that brings us to the aquametals recycling process. It replaces chemical baths and high heat with electricity to recover uh, lithium hydroxide, nickel, cobalt, manganese dioxide. The process has its roots in the lead-acid battery industry. How does it work? Yeah, so um, aqua refining is what we call our suite of technologies, and it's um, uh, it, all our IP and our patent and patent pending process. And what it does is it utilizes uh, a clean electricity based, which can be renewable electricity, uh, closed loop process. And that closed loop process within the recycling process produces high purity metals um, from shredded lithium ion batteries that we get from. Uh, what are called black mass providers. And uh, we can deliver those raw materials right back into the manufacturing supply chain with aqua refining um, without the emissions and really toxic byproducts. Um, and it really stands out because we're recycling the chemicals and regenerating the chemicals um, through our innovative and unique processes by using electricity. And we use those chemicals over and over and over again in that closed, closed loop um, versus a one-time use. And we don't create these huge waste streams um, that I was talking about earlier, like sodium sulfate as an example, um, which can sometimes exceed the amount of recycled materials. We create none of that because we're reassembling those molecules within our process over and over again. And then ultimately what does come out of the process is things that we want to reuse and uh, put back into the battery supply chain like lithium and cobalt and nickel and copper and manganese. And um, the other aspect of aqua refining that's super critical and super important is the working environment really only requires uh, safety goggles and a lab coat. And you're working in a room temperature area with super clean facilities um, where the temperatures really only reach about hot tub temperatures in the isolated tanks um, with pipes and pumps and keeping everything away from the workers. And that ultimately uh, serves our mission and goal of creating jobs um, that uh, members of our, our own families and friends and the, the general community actually want because people don't want to go work in a uh, very difficult chemical or um, heat intensive environment. And we are, um, uh, as a part of our mission, are really trying to create desirable 21st century jobs of the future. Yeah, so you've got this pilot plant operating in Nevada right now. And uh, how, what's the scale of that plant? How much material are you processing? And then what is the commercial facility that you're planning when the fully operational look like? Yeah, so um, we took a unique approach, um, I think, as compared to a lot of other players that are trying to move perhaps too quickly in this um, industry that's getting stood up. And we decided um, at the early on days of our lithium aqua refining program to go through lab scale, then bench scale, and then pilot scale, and then commercial demonstration plant, and then massive commercial plant. Um, so we've already gone through the uh, the lab and the bench testing, and we built a pilot plant 
plant and for the last year have been operating our pilot plant successfully and demonstrating our first-of-kind technology uh, and producing all these critical minerals from that pilot plant, which this quarter is going to go to 24 hours a day by seven-day-a-week operations as we continue to build out our commercial plant I'll talk about later. Um, uh, So that pilot facility today generates between 75 and 100 tons of volume of material per year. So it's not really an economic purpose. It's a validation of technology and getting the critical minerals in the hands of battery manufacturers and big auto and EV manufacturers and uh, inform the scale up of our technology. We're currently producing those high purity minerals and products um, in the form of things like lithium, uh, in the form of lithium hydroxide, which is a white substance, um, uh, and also um, lithium carbonate. Um, We can make both of those uh, forms of lithium. And as an example, the lithium that was produced from our pilot plant um, was recently used by our partners right down the road here in Tahoe, Reno, Nevada, called Dragonfly Energy. And Dragonfly Energy um, successfully manufactured and cycled and tested um, lithium ion battery phosphate next generation uh, cells and uh, proved that our lithium uh, from a recycled source went into that process. That's a huge thing because um, that might be the first uh, lithium cells built in the world that were made from sustainably recycled lithium uh, at 100% level. Um, So we're now building out our workforce and expanding our team uh, and uh, uh, getting that pilot plant operating 24 by 7 in Q1 of this year, 2024, as we get our uh, commercial demonstration facility, the Sierra Arc, up and running, which will start to come online beginning in late Q2 of 2024. This is a space that has garnered a lot of investor interest, a lot of potential policy support, uh, more and more eyes are now on the importance of lithium battery recycling, but it's still a very immature industry, especially compared to something like the lead-acid battery recycling industry. How would you define the current supply chain from, you know, how you source materials to selling the recycled materials? How mature or immature is it and how could it be refined? Yeah, so the the current supply chain is today, um, in terms of commercial scale, really smelters and these hydro processes. The hydro processes that are up and running at any scale are happening in China. Um, the smelting is happening uh, mostly in Europe and a lot here in the U.S. as well uh, as, as it gets started. But now that's really um, less than 1%, like I, I was mentioning earlier, of batteries that are um, getting back into the supply chain through those recycled processes. So they're in lies the opportunity to build this new infrastructure. And aqua refining uh, is what we believe is the technology suite that will allow us to build that infrastructure so it's clean, safe, and protects the workers and all those great things. And so we've structured our business model to help this uh, industry really stand up by creating uh, an intrinsic set of our own IP and our own patents and building our own uh, facility, which today our first commercial facility we call the Sierra Arc because um, it's in the Tahoe, Reno area. So it's right by the Sierras. And the Arc stands for Aqua Refining Recycling Center. And um, that Sierra Arc will prove the technology at scale. Um, so then with our IP, we can uh, joint venture, license, and partner with other players in the world um, to develop new recycling centers utilizing the superior suite of technologies. We've already evidenced that with a first licensee partner of ours that's in Korea called Yulho Materials that made an investment in aqua metals last year and is uh, turning on right now a, uh, a pretty large lithium ion battery crushing and shredding facility to create that black mass that is the input into um, our process. And they'll be building basically a twin of our Sierra arc in South Korea, um, just south of Seoul uh, in the coming years. And that will be the first example of what we believe uh, will be many of partners that we can work with to propagate uh, what we believe is the proper technology to do this recycling. So we started this conversation by talking about how important it is to lock in cleaner infrastructure now, because if we lock in more polluting methods, it's going to be very hard to displace as this industry scales and uh, battery waste mounts. So I want to end this conversation with two scenarios. One is 
just what you think that the battery recycling industry looks like or the pollution problem looks like if we don't get this right, if if we focus on solutions that you say are problematic. And what is a well-managed, clean, circular battery in recycling industry look like? So walk me through those two potential scenarios if we are sitting at this really critical moment. Yeah, there's really two alternate future um, scenarios here. One is that we continue to smelt and um, run uh, really chemical intensive and waste producing and uh, uh, greenhouse gas producing waste streams. And uh, that will create what is already one of the top 10 most pollutive industries in the world, smelting, um, times 10. And uh, we will not have solved any problems in this uh, grand electrification transition from fossil fuels to a world of a battery age and renewable energy storage and electric vehicles um, that are powered by renewable energy sources uh, in the future. Um, If we recycle in the back office all that stuff with um, a dirty process, um, we won't have solved these problems at all. And um, we're going to be apologizing to our kids and grandkids that we had a great idea, but we didn't execute it properly. The alternative universe is that we find the right way to dig up these minerals once uh, from the mining processes and reuse them over and over and over infinitely as we build and grow our uh, capacities um, of battery energy storage in the form of massive quantities of EV fleets and battery energy storage systems. And by reusing those those, uh, minerals and uh, doing that in a clean way that doesn't impact the environment, but is very favorable to the environment um, is going to be that alternative universe um, that we're per- certainly pursuing. And uh, that is something that we can brag about uh, to our kids and grandkids that um, this great transition um, was done by this generation and uh, really truly uh, made the difference for the climate and worker environment and the, the real battery age and re- utopian view of, of society being powered by renewable energy. Steve Cotton president and CEO of Aquametals. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aquametals is pioneering cleaner and safer battery metals recycling through innovation. The company is building the first sustainable battery recycling operation in North America, in Tahoe, Reno, expanding breakthrough tech that can deliver high-value raw materials while reducing emissions and toxic byproducts. If you want to learn more about the sustainable, closed-loop metal recycling process from Aquametals, go to aquametals.com. 